Carol and Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today I've got a behind the scenes studio tour for you. Normally you just see me standing here doing the intros and talking on camera, but today you're gonna get a look behind at all the other parts. As you're looking at this, if you're thinking, wow, this kind of has a kitchen feel to it, you are right on track. The previous owners of our house had designed the basement as a mother-in-law suite, so this was supposed to be the kitchenette. To me, it meant a lot of cabinets and a linoleum floor that I could make a big old mess on. Now, it came with the cabinets built into the wall where the sink was, but everything else that you're seeing here, that stuff we've added. Now, the island, those were wall cabinets. We went and bought those cheap, the cheapest cabinets we could find at like Home Depot or Lowe's, and they're actually wall cabinets that we've put there. And yet, you can probably even spot the two by fours in the green right above the Monopoly board. Yeah, it's just two by fours there that created that shelf to get it up to a comfortable countertop height. That also ended up creating a nice shelf on there where I could stuff more things, more places to squirrel art supplies. I chose glass for my countertops because one, it was easy to get cut in the exact size that I wanted, and two, it also gave me a surface that was super easy to clean and durable. The shelves that are there, they're very shallow shelves, and that allows me to get stuff up on the walls where I can see it, because I'm a firm believer if you can't see it or get to it easily, you're probably not gonna use it a whole lot. So how did we make those? Well, we go to the hardware store, and I just looked for boards that were about the depth of what I wanted, and we bought a whole bunch of those and just cut them off at the width that we want. This is such simple construction. What you see here is what you get. Man, we just have those sides and the shelves in there and we just nailed them all together. By painting them the same color as the wall, they look a lot nicer than what they are, but those are just basic boards from the hardware store. So if I love that glass so much, why do I have a bunch of paper covering up my counter over here where I do the filming for you, where I make all the videos that you see? Well, that's because glass, although it's easy to clean, has a whole lot of glare to it. And white paper doesn't have nearly as much glare. Plus, all of my spills and messes get caught on that, and a lot of times that under paper becomes something I love as much or even more than the project that I'm making. I get asked a lot about my camera setup and how I get that angle on the camera. And what I've got it there are boards from the hardware store that I've just stuck out from the wall and that's what's holding up the lights, the camera. The camera actually used to be duct taped onto there, but then I got a different camera and so I got a bendy arm that's holding it up there. That big round light that you see, that's actually balancing on top of there. It's not really how it was meant to be used, but it's how it works for me. For those of you that ask, how do I store my gel plates? Well, they are all up there on that top shelf above the sink. That's where I keep them. They're not in the clamshell. They're just stacked one on top of the other with the plastic backing in between them. I will confess, my studio usually doesn't look this clean, but I knew you were gonna be stopping by, so I cleaned it all up. Well, I cleaned most of it up, not the sink. Yeah, that really could use a cleaning, but guess what? I'm not doing it today, and I'm probably not gonna do it for a very long time. Very early on, I realized that if it wasn't within sight, I wasn't gonna remember it. So that's why I have my art journals that I'm working on up here, some canvases behind there. And the older I'm getting, the more I'm noticing I'm really forgetting things that I can't see. So why did I use command adhesive hooks here to hold up the paint? Is it because it makes it easy to put it away? Yes. Is it because I can see that it's there and I'll remember to use it? Yes. And it also used some dead space because that's the side of the cabinet that had nothing on it. And now I get to actually use it to store some things. Since where I live doesn't have naturally occurring rainbows happening every day, say like in Hawaii, my husband built this giant rainbow to put right outside my studio door so that anytime I wanna see a rainbow, I just have to look out there. And if you're wondering what that's made with, duct tape, tubing from the hardware store, and spray foam. So this kitchenette area is what I consider the splash zone. This is where I use a lot of the wet stuff. But in the next room, that's where I use a lot of the dry things. So that's where I keep things like the sewing machine, the computer, because those really don't handle water very well at all. Now I've got all sorts of cabinets here, and on them I've treated it like a giant bulletin board, because some of my favorite scraps that I wanna use in things, if I can't see them, I'm not gonna remember that they're there. So my favorite ones go up on this wall, and then when I need something, I can just pull it right off of there. On that tower right there, that's where I keep my stencils. 
And for me, putting things away means it has to be easy because I'm not a big fan of this whole cleaning thing. So what I do for my stencils is I put a J hook on them and that way then I can easily just put them away by hanging them up. If something is in irregular shape or I can't put a J hook on, then I use one of those clips that come with the spinner racks. Now you might think I've got a lot of stencils on there and I really do, but I only have a fraction of what Stencil Girl has available because everything you see there, they're from Stencil Girl. They have over 1700 stencils and over 60 different designers. So if you like stencils, I encourage you to go check them out. So I've got some more open shelves here where I've put all of my big dies on it for the Sizzix machine. I love having them where I can read the names and easily get them because if I can't easily grab them, guess what? I'm not really going to use them. You might have noticed that I've got labels on a lot of drawers, on a lot of shelves, things like that. And that's not just because I have an addiction to using my label maker. It's extremely helpful for me to be able to see what's where. So that way I don't have to actually open every single drawer while I'm looking for that one thing that I can't find. And that's why I love open shelving whenever possible, because I can automatically see what's going on there. In the back of the room, I've got a comfy place where I can sit down and enjoy a book or gather my thoughts when I need to. On these shelves, I've propped up art journals, art books that I've purchased, canvases, things that I'm working on. Some of these are finished, some of them are in progress, but they're all up there for me to see them. Because, yep, you guessed it, if I can't see it, I'm not going to remember it. Now, these shelves are nothing fancy. It's simply a piece of lumber from the hardware store, cut down to the size that I wanted, and then attached to the wall. Because I knew I would be sitting underneath the shelf somewhat, I wanted to put some color on the underside of the shelf so that when I'm sitting on the sofa and I look up, I'm not just going to see a bunch of plain old white space. All I did was take scraps and leftover bits and collage them directly on to the bottom of these shelves. You might be wondering, does the studio always look this clean with all this open space? Uh, no, it does not. There is usually stuff piled up here, there, things in process, in progress. I have an incredible habit of starting things and then stepping away from them, which is great from a creative standpoint, but really not so great from a keep your space clean standpoint. So usually though, there's stuff piled up everywhere and even spills onto the floor sometimes. So don't think that this is what it looks like every single day. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today. I so appreciate you spending this time with me. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as there's a new video out. And of course, if you'd like to see more of what I'm up to, head on over to acolorfuljourney.com where you can see more of the play. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.